Okay, so this is an intro to using rate equations in Python. Basic rate equations. These are ordinary differential equations. Recall that a rate equation looks like so. We have dy dt is some function of y and t. Now, um, we call this a rate equation because we're given the rate. Our unknown is y, and we want y as a function of time, but we're not given y as a function of time. All we're given is the rate expression for y. So we need to integrate this numerically to find the desired solution. Um, we call this function, the right-hand side function, or the rate because it's dy dt, so it's y versus time as a rate. Um, in addition to the rate expression, we always need some initial condition. So we'll have the initial value for y, and then we'll step in, step along to find the solution. And this is done using Python's function ODE int. So here's an example: radioactive decay. We have dc dt equals minus c over tau. Here tau is some constant. Let's let it be one, and we'll have some initial concentration c zero. We can let it be one also and dc dt is minus c over tau so in this case c is our variable y and the function which is normally a function of y and t doesn't have to depend on both of those we just write it that way so that it uh, is general and in general can depend on both y and t here it doesn't depend on time it just depends on c we also have the exact solution c equals c0 e to the minus t over tau and um, this solution uh, was found by separating and integrating. So the numerical solution has four steps. First, we have to define the function, so we need to define this thing. Second, we set the desired solution time, so where do we want the answer? Third, we set the initial condition, and fourth, we call ODE int, and we can get that function from the scipy.integrate library. So here's the boilerplate import numpy is np, imports from scipy.integrate import ode int, and then some plotting libraries here. So step one, define the function, def f of c comma t, and then we can set tau equals 1.0, and just return minus c over tau, and that's the function. Step two, set the desired solution time. So t equals np dot lin space start to end. Let's end at 5 and let's maybe do 20 points. And then we need an initial condition. Step 3 is 1.0 and then we solve it. So c equals ode int the function, the initial condition, and the uh, list of times we're solving it at. So after we call this, C will be um, C will be an array that, cor that with the value corresponding to each time. Okay, let's also get the exact solution. So T exact equals NP dot lin space. Let's make more of those zero to five with maybe a hundred points, and C exact equals C naught times NP dot exp of minus. C T over tau. Okay, and then we can plot these up. So plt dot plot t comma c, and maybe use dots. Plt dot plot t t exact c exact with lines. Give me a legend. Legend Python and exact. Maybe we'll call this ODE int. int. And the boxes are lame. Frame on, frame on equals false. And tau is not defined, of course. Tau equals one. And more problems. They must have the same first and second dimensions because I should write tau te there. There we go. So there's our plot. So we can see that the blue dots land right on the green line. So we have pretty high accuracy. Um, unlike when using the explicit Euler formula, for example, you don't need to worry about how many points you put. So if I use 10 points instead of 20, my accuracy is still great because Python is going to fig Python's going to evaluate the function at whatever internal points it needs to to get its desired default accuracy 
and then it's going to evaluate the function c at the points that I asked for. So whether I ask for two or a thousand, it's going to basically give me the same accuracy and the blue dots will land on the green line. Now as usual, if we happen to have a function, a right hand side function that, defend, that depends on more parameters, like argument one and argument two, etc., we can tell ODE int about that by giving it some extra functions. So if we go help ODE int, then it tells us that we can specify extra arguments between uh, parentheses. And then you can see a number of other um, default parameters that it gives you and more help information about how to use this function uh, with lots of other um, options. But for most cases, the defaults work just fine, and we'll just use those. Okay, so that's a single equation and a single unknown. Four steps. Define the function, define the initial condition, define the times you want, and then call ODE int. So most of those are just setting up the problem. You've got to tell it what function to use, you've got to tell it where you want to solve, you've got to tell it where to start, and then you tell and then you feed all that to ODE int, and away you go. And then you can plot it out. Okay, let's look at solving multiple equations in multiple unknowns. So here we have an example where we have two rate equations and two unknowns. So my unknowns are v and x. This problem physically represents uh, falling objects with drag, so the velocity increases via acceleration and decreases due to the drag force. And then the position of the of what of the object is the rate of change of position of the object is just given by the velocity. So we represent this in a way that's similar to what we use for F solve. If you have more than one equation and more than one unknowns, then you define it as a vector quantity, and then your function you pass in a vector of unknowns and you return a vector of rates. So we'll do the same steps as before. We'll define the vector. We will um, <clears throat> set the times we want to solve it at. We'll form the vector of initial conditions and then we'll call ODE int. And you can see from these equations what the correspondence is between our variables v and x are now y0 and y1 and our rate function, rate function 0, is a function of my variables y0 and y1 and t, y0 and y1 and t. This is in general, they don't have, not every rate expression has to depend on every variable, but they can. So here again is the correspondence between our functions and our variables listed below when we go from the raw equations to the uh, vector formulation. So let's go ahead and set this up. First step, define the function, def f of x, and let's do def f of y comma t. Now y is an array and it's convenient for setting up the rate to recover my uh, raw variables. So I pass in a vector y, I need to return a rate vector f. So, but any anything in between I can do whatever I want. So I'm gonna go, let's let v equal y zero and let's let uh, x equal y1 and now we can define our functions dv dt equals g minus c times v squared and dx dt equals v we probably need g somewhere 9.81 and c equals 1 and now we can return our rates so return an array of rates return np.array dv dt and dx dt. So this is meant for convenience. We pass in the array so I recover my original variables so that I can write my rates as my equation was given and then I need to return the array of rates. It's possible to re replace all of that with just return np.array and we could just write uh, 9.81 minus 1.0 times v, which is y0 squared. That's my first rate, and my second rate is um, simply y0. 
and that would work just fine. A much shorter version, but not as obvious and not as easy to read. So we'll skip that one. So step one, we've defined the function. Step two, define some times. t equals np dot lin space. Let's go from zero to three with 100 points. Initial condition, y0 equals an array of initial conditions, np dot array. And let's let the initial velocity be zero and the initial position be zero. So again, these all co coincide. If y0 is v, then my initial condition, the first element, should be for v. And if y1 is for x, then my y1 element should be for x in the initial condition. And the same thing for the rate. The rate expression for v comes first, rate expression for x comes second. So everything's consistent there. Now, step four, we solve the problem. y equals ODE int with the function and the initial condition and the times. Okay, and it solved it. And let's go ahead and see what it looks like. So now y, if we print y, it's a two-dimensional matrix. And the first column is the first variable, which is v at every time. So there's v0 and v at each time, the velocity at all times. And here's my second variable, x, at all times. So we can use this as the 2D matrix, or we can recover our variables. So we can write, if we want to, we can write, we can write, maybe, if I can get it, Uh, v equals y everything comma zero, x equals y everything comma one. So this notation will extract all the rows of the zeroth column and for x all the rows of the one oneth column. And then we can plot it. Plt dot plot uh, x t plt dot plot y t plt dot legend uh, x y. Maybe put a label on there, plt.x label, t in seconds, and plt.y label. This can be x or y, x in meters, or y or v in meters per second. And that shouldn't be y, that should be v velocity. And when we plot it up, we get, oops, obviously we've made a problem. The velocity isn't quite right. And we can see what we've done wrong here. So we have g minus c times v squared. And dx dt is v. Yeah, well, it's not wrong. We've just plotted it backwards. X, T, and Y. Of course, it goes X, Y. And that's not X. We'll plot this as, no, that's X and that's V. There we go, much better. And let's just go a little bit shorter. Two is fine. So we get the uh, velocity increases due to gravity, and as it gets faster and faster, the drag force uh, becomes the same as the acceleration force and we get um, as the gravitational force and we reach terminal velocity. Once we've reached terminal velocity the position just increases linearly. So exactly what we expect it to do. So this is how you do a two-dimensional problem. It looks basically the same but we pass in an array for our function we pass in the array of unknowns and we return the array of rates. So here's two more exercises that you can do on your own. The first problem is a one equation and one unknown, and t is your unknown. And the second one has four equations and four unknowns. So again, use the same kinds of approaches to see if you can solve these ones.